sat the people I was doing, I was doing. First off, apologies about the mess in this room. Um, I'm actually packing all my shit up to go to Santorini in the morning, and so my shit is just everywhere. It's a general mess, apologies about that. Second off, apologies about the background noise. They're constantly like building new apartments right outside my window. It's fucking loud, mate. It's not ideal if you're making YouTube videos, but hopefully we can all deal with it and still hear me fine. So, you may have noticed that I turned 29 recently. Uh, it was a few days ago now. And um, I was having some general thoughts about life yesterday and I thought I'd just share some shit because, you know, life's a fucking conversation, in it? And uh, the whole point of thoughts is that like you can share them, turn them into combos, get them out of your brain into like vocal format, and uh, then people can judge them and tell you if they are shit thoughts or if they're like somewhat valid or not. Um, and so that's what I'm gonna do. I feel like I've, I feel like I've learnt a lot about life in my 29 years on planet Earth. However, another possibility is that I've learnt fuck all and I'm still a dumb motherfucker. So, you know. That is always a possibility, always a likelihood I would, I would go that far. So I made some notes on my phone because I'd rather actually make sure that I say everything I want to say um, than try and look cool by like memorising every single thing. So I want to genuinely like get through shit and make my points. So obviously, you know, I'm not, I'm not a wise guy like you, you let me know. Uh, everything is uh, about conversation so you can judge my shit some shit might seem basic to you anyway i'm gonna crack on i've numbered shit number one you have to choose your own path so by that i mean well what i don't mean is doing something different just for the sake of doing something different um i feel like that is actually just the exact same as following the crowd it's two sides of the same coin. And so if you're doing something different just for the sake of being different and being perceived as someone who does something different, that's still not really your decision. It's still a decision impacted by by what you think others will, you know, perceive you to be like and, and what others will think. Um, and so I feel like it's really difficult but essential to separate your own genuine decisions and your own genuine kind of inclinations on what you like and what you want to do and what what makes you happy from uh what is like effect affected by other people and, and your perception of, of other people's thoughts about you um and so that that doesn't necessarily even be even have to be what you do you know it can be when you do it, like your mates might be getting busy career wise while you're just um, while you're just working on yourself uh, and figuring some shit out about yourself and that's actually fine because any kind of like learning and personal growth to use a cliche term you know is still putting you in a better position to handle life and, and, for example, to smash the fuck out of that career shit at a later date. So as long as you're being productive with that time, I don't think it really matters, you know, it, it, what other people are doing so much. And so to some extent, I suppose what I'm saying is, to some extent, you're always going to be somewhat impressionable um, but if you can at least be aware of that see the thing is just being aware of things really helps man. and if you can at least be aware of your tendency as a as a, a human to be impression to be impressionable um, then you have a better shot at making truly independent decisions and I think they're the only decisions that are really gonna lead you to actual like, you know, fulfillment and shit. All right. Number two, it's all relative. Uh, so what I mean by that is essentially as a human, you are programmed to take shit for granted. Um, that's what makes us so kind of adaptable as a species we can exist in so many different sets of circumstances and, and that's a good thing but the bad side of that 
is that it can kind of um, it, it, it can encourage you to take things for granted and not appreciate things as much as you perhaps should because everything just becomes normal for you and so you know you, you can think of like basic example basic examples like let's let's use like let's use something relevant let's say let's say I'm a youtuber right and uh, I typically get 10,000 views on my videos, right? And then I put a video up one day and it gets 15,000 views, right? I'm happy about it. Yeah, I'm chuffed. Over the fucking moon, mate. Right? And now, let's say there's another person. All else is pretty much the same. They are also a YouTuber, but they usually get 30,000 views. And then they put a video up and it actually only gets 20,000 views. And like because of rel because of the relative scale of it and the deviance from what is normal for them, they're gonna actually just feel disappointed about that, right? But then when you zoom out and look at it on balance, you know, there's the first person and the second person. The second person is still in in a better position, assuming that all else is equal, you know. But how they feel is gonna be different simply based on what they have acclimatized to and the typical expectations of life and so like you could say uh you know a different example could be like let's say i'm a fucking upper class aristocrat and i'm, I'm financially sweet and I have a stable family and everything is great and one day i get a bad exam result and my cat dies in the same day right it's gonna be a fucking bad day for me Right, and let's say there's another person who is, you know, who sells chicken wraps on the street in Thailand, and they're a street vendor, and like they're not like absolute third world poverty, but they're certainly not as well off generally, circumstantially, as the other person. And then one day, some rich tourist walks past and gives them a hundred quid tip. Yeah, they're absolutely over the fucking moon, right? And then those two people, you know one person essentially has a better life and they're having a bad day and the other person has not as good life when we're talking about general circumstances general markers of quality of life but is having a great day and how they feel is really just tied to the like i say like the deviance from what is normal for them as opposed to the actual genuine set of you know real world zoomed out circumstances um and i think like generally being aware of that helps you you know develop a better kind of outlook and a better appreciation for what is real um, and it makes you less um less susceptible to like 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 minor fluctuations and minor you know um like little things that might go wrong in your life, basically. Uh, it just gives you a, 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 a better overall perspective and outlook, uh, you know, and sense of relative scale, you know. A bad day for you is probably not a fucking bad day. That's what I'm saying. All right, number three. What's number three? All right, uh, this is like super basic. Um, so uh, apologies if, if it's patronizing, but like I think, how, how should I explain this? There's a million ways of explaining this, but um what i would what i would consider a fucking key life skill is almost going meta on yourself and having some kind of like third person perspective so when you're a kid you you completely act impulsively so someone says something and you respond just whatever pops into your head if you've got a concern you voice your concern without thinking like can i solve this somehow myself or you know do i really need to put this out there um you know, someone acts and you and you react and you just live this kind of uh, impulsive life that's that's not any way like rational, r reasonable or, or calculated. And then, as you get older, what you should hopefully do is become better at taking a step back from your immediate impulses, uh, at, and instead of just being someone who acts acts based on what you 
essentially feel in that moment. You become more someone who observes that and, and, and can then make an informed decision on how to act and you can start to ask questions like, all right, do I feel annoyed? All right, if I feel annoyed today, why do I feel annoyed? Uh, and can I do anything to make me feel less annoyed? And uh, is there any real point in feeling like this? Is there, does it serve a purpose? You know, s sometimes what we could say negative feelings do serve a purpose. You know, is the, ang is the anxiety of having a public speaking event going to make me prepare better for it? Possibly, you know, and then a lot of times certain emotions are just fucking completely pointless And that doesn't just because the pointless doesn't necessarily mean that you can somehow stop yourself from feeling them Because a lot of time you don't really have a choice But it can definitely kind of uh, lessen the impact of negative emotions on you um, And so and you know another, another way you could you could talk about it is like your ideal self and your actual self and your ideal self act appropriately based on rationality and reason in every situation, right? And then your actual self is just, you know, someone who should really be trying to catch up to that at all times. And, and someone who really, let's say you, you're in a specific situation. If you can think, right, looking back on this in six months or a year's time, how do I need to act now to make me be able to st still feel pride in how I acted then or still be happy with how I acted then and be satisfied basically not look back and cringe at myself um, or alternatively you could say although I'm not a, a particular fan <laughs> I'm not a fan whatsoever of like religion in general that's all Christians do when they say what would Jesus do it means what would this person with all kind of uh, w w with this overarching better perspective what what would this ideal person act like you know it's the, it's the same principle just in a, in a religious context like um i feel like that's just fucking essential man that, that that's ba that's it's like basic step one self-awareness that how am i impacting people um you know just viewing yourself as a PlayStation character, basically. Like, you're not the character anymore. You're one step back and you're controlling the character. And you're like, right, what's the best thing for this person? You know? Right, I'm going to move on. Number four. What's number four? Happiness is a skill. So, um, this is, I think, as opposed to something you just passively feel, Happiness is something that you learn and get better at as you go through life and, and it, It's really and with any skill You don't just get better at it in a linear fashion. Yeah, because you know you, you think you're smashing it Yeah, and then you plateau and you're like fuck what's going on here? And then you maybe have some kind of breakthrough and you're like, yeah, and like your actual learning curve is is, is not linear whatsoever um, but on the whole, gradually, it should be it should be an upwards trend if you live an open-minded life and you're always willing to fucking learn. Um, essentially, I think happiness is a combination of your 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 real-world circumstances, which some people like to fucking overlook and play psychological fucking acrobatics with. Um, it's your real-world circumstances plus your your overall outlook on those circumstances, you know and the fact is that most of us are lucky enough most of us are lucky enough to be in complete control of both of those um some people aren't that fortunate you know um so so obviously this doesn't apply to to everyone some people don't have the fucking the basic needs met where they can you know you, you can't tell someone who, who, who's malnourished that it's all about thinking positively basically <sighs> all right number what am I on? number five Okay, uh, you're always learning, and so what I mean by this is like, how many times do you you feel confident about your opinion on something? You're or sure of yourself about a certain, you know, a certain opinion you have about, you know, whatever it is, and then you look back on that opinion in like two years time, and you're like, fuck, I was actually dumb, I was actually a dumb cunt, I was like, why did I even think that? Now I know better. Now with my extra 
two years life experience or whatever, now I know so much better than I did back then. Oh yeah, right. And the mistake then is thinking that the cycle is finished and, and now you actually do know better. The, mis the mistake and, tr and real arrogance is thinking that that's it, you know, because you have to notice the pattern. The pattern is you feel sure of yourself, you learn, you realize you were wrong, you're sure of yourself again, right? But it doesn't stop there, that's just the cycle. You, you continuously learn and that is, that is like humility and that is what keeps you open-minded, you know, realizing that it doesn't stop, you just gradually get better at, at understanding things. Um, and so that, that's why you see, you see like a lot of Instagram captions and shit like that and it's like, it, it'll be just be a typical cliche or some shit. And you, you might look at it and you're like, isn't that a bit obvious? Why, why is this person like saying this? And, and it's because they think that the cycle is over. They've had this realization and so they write a caption like, oh, don't compare yourself to others. And you're like, yeah, I know, yeah. But what they don't realize is that, uh, that's probably a bad example, but what they don't realize is that they're, they're still gonna look back on that and know better at some point. They, they think that that is the end of the cycle and now they've figured it out. You've never figured it out, man. Uh, and so even pertaining to this specific video, I might look back on it and think like, that's, well, you know, that was stupid. Why do you say all that, that shit? You know, it's not helping anyone. Well, I suppose how we get to that next point, part of it is the conversation. And so maybe you can help me Maybe you can help me realize I was daft down. Um, all right, number six, how is more important than what? And so what I mean by that is like, particularly, this is particularly relevant to today, to, to the specific day and age that we live in. You've got endless fucking options, man. You know, the world really is your oyster. You can do anything you fucking want. You can live any kind of abstract lifestyle you want to, right? But if you get too hung up on making the right choice and, and trying to, you get too hung up on the what and don't put enough emphasis into the how, then you are absolutely wrought with indecision and anxiety over your decision because you're, you're thinking, is this the right choice? Did I make the right decision? Am I doing the right thing? Is this my fucking purpose? Is this my passion? Am I on the right path? You know, uh, or could something have been better and then the comparison kills you and, and it's and it's too many options and too many options are not necessarily a good thing like you know what is far more important is is making the choice right you know making the choice into the right one and that happens after the fact it's not about making the right choice it's about applying yourself to something and then creating your own kind of purpose and meaning from that, from the actual act of applying yourself to something. Because if you zoom out far enough, everything's insignificant, yeah? Literally everything is insignificant. If you zoom out far enough, we're, we're floating on a fucking rock, orbiting a fucking fireball in the middle of a fucking galaxy going around a fucking supermassive black hole flying through fucking space and, and expanding the universe. Fucking, it's all, it's all insignificant, right? And so, so, you have to you have to create your own significance just by applying yourself to the thing and you will waste so much time if you think about doing the right thing man. in terms of like your your specific passion and, and path like it, it's fucking that's wasted time man. um apply yourself and choose something and then if it turns out that it's not it's not the right thing you'll know soon enough but you can only know by applying yourself all right, number seven is the last one. Um, all right, fuck, this is this is like fucking key, man. This is like my main, probably my main one, generally. So, navigating life is all about context. The whole of your fucking existence happens in the grey area, you know, in the somewhere on the spectrum between a million absolutes that very rarely fucking apply. So, what I mean by that is like, I can spout a million cliches now 
and I can try and boil life down into simplistic terms and, and general rules that you that you can then go and apply. But the whole point is that sometimes life calls for a cutthroat attitude and sometimes it calls for compassion and sometimes you need to be a romantic and sometimes you need to be a realist yeah and and the whole game of life is choosing it is trying to wrestle with the fucking uncertainty and exist in that fucking flux and just apply what you know and decide and decide when is the appropriate time to apply what because you know self self help self improvement shit and instagram motivation pages will will try and will just put forward this notion that you can boil shit down and and oversimplify life into little set little set rules man but you can't put it in a box man it does not fit in a box and if you're constantly trying to apply you know oversimplified rules to things then you you pl you're trying to play the game w with the wrong rules like and it won't work and and if that if that's what you try and do if you don't accept the the uncertainty of everything then you'll always be afraid of it and you'll never be comfortable with not knowing and these are the people that worry themselves into an early grave man you know um the the key to being fucking a chilled out peaceful motherfucker is accepting that you you live in that fucking flux man you are in the uncertainty and your main fucking objective is just trying to trying to apply correct context you know um trying to be the right you at the right time like you know and trying to be what is essentially you know a human the adaptive species that that i mentioned like um that's fucking key, man. Context is key. All right, uh, I think that's it. That's all I've got for now. Um, let me know if you if you like me thoughts. There's probably loads more shit I can think about, but obviously, I don't, you know, just top of my head kind of shit. All right, see you later. Jordan Lenny is my hero.